Hello. My name is Robin and I work for the RSPB. That stands for the Royal Society Protection of Birds. We are a nature conservation charity that helps to protect nature for people and wildlife to enjoy. Today I'll be delivering you a session about migration, but specifically about migration of birds on the inner fourth. The learning outcome for today's session is learning about why birds undertake the inherited behaviour of migration. To start off with, we will explain what migration is. Then we will listen to a story all about the migration of dumb ones. We'll complete a worksheet at the same time. And then we'll map the journey of the dumb ones. We'll finish off by giving you a wild challenge to complete. But first, Makaton. Makaton uses our words, symbols and signs and gives extra visual clues to help with general understanding and basic communication. Today's word that we're going to learn in Makaton is bird. We can see the picture of the bird, which is the symbol here. And we'll be learning the sign. To make the sign for, the, for bird, you want to take your dominant hand, so the hand that you use most, and put your forefinger and your thumb like this here, and turn it on the side and hold it up next to your mouth, like this on this side, and it'll look like this. And what we want to do is when we say the word bird, we'll bring that up to our mouth, and move your finger and thumb together like this. Can you try it along with me? Let's take a finger and thumb, we put it up next to our mouth and say bird. Bird. For the rest of the session, every time you hear me say bird, I want you to do the Makaton sign along with me. What does migration mean? The word migration comes from the Latin migratus. That means to change and refers to how birds change their geographic locations seasonally. This means that they move from one place of the world to another. And seasonally means, can we name the four seasons? Winter, spring, summer, and autumn. These are the four seasons that we get in Scotland. However, seasons can change from country to country. But why do birds migrate? Migration is an inherited survival behavior. Inherited means a characteristic or quality that you've got genetically from your parents. So it's within you. It might be your hair colour or your eye colour, or it could be a behaviour, which then is usually described as a, an instinct, something that's natural, for example, a typically a fixed pattern or behaviour in animals in response to a certain situation. For example, migration in birds. Birds like to migrate because they go to places with more food available, as this helps reduce the competition. They go to find better shelter and for warmer or colder weather. Another reason for migration is it also avoids disease spreading, as parasite populations fall during the winter time. So it increases the bird's survival. Next up, we have story time. You're going to listen to a story called Deary the Dunlin. It's about a bird that is born and migrates all the way to the inner fourth. Your teacher will hand out a worksheet for you to complete while you listen to the story. So listen carefully. Enjoy. Enjoy. 
The Story of Deary the Dunlin Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, a miracle was about to unfold. Crack! And for the first time in all that was known of time, a white light poured in and filled the entire warm and safe cocoon. Crack! A brown, down curved bill poked through the eggshell. Crack, crack, crack! And with the final crack, a little fluffy body was free from their egg cocoon. Deary the Dunlin was born into the world, and for the first time, she moved her head from side to side, side to side. She shook her shoulders up and down and up and down. She took a deep breath and stretched out her wings as wide as they could go, pointing the fingers of her feathers to their furthest tips they could reach. She took another deep breath and said, What a day to be alive. Can you join, dearie, in her morning routine? She moved her head from side to side, side to side, shook her shoulders up and down and up and down, took a deep breath, and as she breathed out, she stretched her wings as wide as they could go, pointing the fingers of her feathers to the furthest tips that they could reach. She took another deep breath and said, What a day to be alive! She looked around and took in her surroundings. The bright yellow sun, the clear blue skies, and a green pine forest in the distance. How beautiful! Soon, she realised standing just beside her was a larger bird with brown wings and a white belly. Hello, dearie! Welcome to the world! What a day to be alive! This was her father. Her mum had gone on to the feeding grounds after laying her egg and her dad had cared for the egg as she grew inside. Yes, your mum's gone on to a bonny place called Scotland. Here, it's warmer over winter, and full of thousands of yummy worms to eat, and more dunlins and other birds to meet. Your name, Deary, is from there. In the Scottish language of Gaelic, Deary means pilgrim, meaning one who undertakes a long journey. So, said Deary, does that mean I'll undertake this long journey to Scotland? Yes, her dad said. This is called migration, and all the information that you need to be able to migrate is inside you. You're born with it. So, how come I'm not born looking like you? said Deary to her father. Ah, said her dad. When you lose your baby feathers, you will have the same feathers as all the other Dunlins. You'll have a white belly and brown wings. These have been passed on to you from me and your mum, and from your grandparents, and your great-grandparents, and your great-great-grandparents, and your great-great-great-great-grandparents, and your... Okay, okay dad, I get the point. Yes, so you have inherited them just like you've inherited your knowledge about migration and the shape and size and colour of your beak and feet. Soon Deary realised that there were other things that she had not inherited, things that she had to learn about from other Dunlins, particularly her wise aunt Minerva, who seemed to know everything. From Aunt Minerva, she learnt how to recognise predators. She learnt about all the different types of bird songs, such as alarms, al alarm calls. The Dunlins would use alarm calls to sing when there was any danger. She also learnt about how to fly in perfect unison with other Dunlins. This was called flocking. 
After 20 days, she had learned enough and grown enough to be independent, and it was time for her dad to go ahead to the Scottish feeding grounds. See you when you get there, as he flew away into the horizon. A few months later, Deary had grew even more and was finally ready for her first migration. The journey would be heading southwest, away from her homeland of Russia, across Scandinavia, North Europe, and finally to Scotland. She felt nervous even at the thought of how far it would be. It was so daunting, but the food was becoming scarce and the temperatures colder. It was time to go. One day, a large flock of fellow Dunlins gathered and she had her flight buddies with her beside, Aunt Minerva and her best friend Alex. Taking a final look at the bright yellow sun, the clear blue sky and the green pine forests in the distance, it was finally time to set off on their new adventure together. Join Deary as she gets ready. She moved her head from side to side, side to side. She shook her shoulders up and down and up and down. She took a deep breath and stretched out her wings as wide as they could go, pointing the fingers of her feathers to their furthest tips that they could reach. She took another deep breath and said, what a day to be alive. She began flapping her wings and took to the sky, climbing and gliding to reach up high. Inside she knew exactly where to go and soared forward in that direction. After a long time, they reached their first stop along the way. Landing, Deary looked around to take in her surroundings and felt a sense of familiarity at the big yellow sun, the clear blue sky and the green pine forest in the distance. They had landed by the shore and were looking for worms in the mud. Mm -mm -mm. Bellies full, about to set off again, Deary heard a tweet in the distance. Help! shouted Alex, who had been closer to the sea than they had. My wing is covered in black goo! Deary and Aunt Minerva soared over quick and picked Alex up, bringing them safely ashore and away from the black goo. I can't fly, said Alex in a worried tweet. Just then a human walked past, a little girl out for a walk. Oh no, she said, you're covered in oil, at Alex, looking at Alex. She ran away and returned with a local authority worker who cleaned Alex's wing carefully using warm soapy water. And finally, and thankfully, Alex was able to set off again. Hopefully we'll catch up with the rest of the flock, thought Deary. And so it was time to set off again on the new adventure. She moved her head from side to side, side to side. She shook her shoulders up and down and up and down. She took a deep breath and stretched out her wings as wide as they could go, pointing the fingers of her feathers to their furthest tips that they could reach. She took another deep breath and said, What a day to be alive! She began flapping her wings and took to the sky, climbing and gliding to reach up high, and inside she knew exactly where to go, and soared in that direction. Landing, Deary looked around to take in her surroundings and felt a sense of familiarity at the big yellow sun, the clear blue sky and the green pine forest in the distance. Except it looked like the trees were falling over. Aunt Minerva, why are the trees falling over? Ah, said Aunt Minerva, sometimes the humans, they, they cut down the trees to make things with. But but what about the animals that live there? Where do they go? Can they migrate as well? Well, they do have to find somewhere else to live, unfortunately. It can cause habitat destruction when trees are cut down, which means that animals lose their home. 
But some forests are okay to cut down if they are managed sustainably. This means that there is a balance between the animals and trees that use the forests, the cultural use of the forests by people for medicine, for shelter and for firewood. And also it can be managed that some of it can be cut down and sold to make money for the local economy. So when it's managed sustainably, everyone benefits. And so it was time to set off again on their new adventure. She moved her head from side to side, side to side. She shook her shoulders up and down and up and down. She took a deep breath and stretched out her wings as wide as they could go, pointing the fingers of her feathers to their furthest tips that they could reach. She took another deep breath and said, what a day to be alive. She began flapping her wings and took to the sky, climbing and gliding to reach up high and inside she knew exactly where to go and soared in that direction. After a long time, Deary heard a noise like thunder in the distance. Maybe we should land, said Aunt Minerva. They began their descent when suddenly an enormous bird flew out from behind the big black cloud. It was made of metal, with with no beak, but, but lights coming out of its body, and a loud whirring noise. Aeroplane! exclaimed Aunt Minerva. Suddenly, the air around quickly changed direction, and Deary was tumbling and fumbling through the sky. She couldn't work out what way was up or down, but it seemed like she was falling faster and faster and faster until everything went dark. Deary opened her eyes to look around and take in her surroundings. There was no big yellow sun and the sky was dark navy blue. But soon she realised she was in a familiar place of the green pine forest. Oh, I'm so glad this hasn't been cut down, she thought as she drifted asleep. The next day, it was time for the final flight. She knew inside she was very close to Scotland. She felt a bit nervous to be alone, but knew that she would make it there very soon and it would be okay. So for the final time, she moved her head from side to side, side to side. She shrugged her shoulders up and down and up and down. She took a deep breath and stretched out her wings as wide as they could go, pointing the fingers of her feathers to their furthest tips that they could reach. She took another deep breath and said, What a day to be alive! She began flapping her wings and took to the sky, climbing and gliding to reach up high. Inside, she knew exactly where to go and soared in that direction. Soon she saw the big red bridge that she had been told about. She looked around and also saw the Lithgow Palace, Blackness Castle, King Cardin Bridge, Clack Manon Tower, and the RSPB Skinflats Reserve. She headed in that direction and finally landed amongst many other birds along the inner fourth mudflats. Exhausted and hungry, she filled her belly with worms and let out a huge sigh. <sighs> she had arrived! Deary began to notice all the different bird songs around her. Birds of all different shapes and sizes and feather colour that she'd never seen before. She began looking for her friends and family, but found other Dunlins who looked very similar, but had a different accent. Ah, we're the Dunlins from Greenland. In fact, there's 11 different races of Dunlin. But we're all the same inside, eh? We're all warm-blooded fluffy things who just love to eat worms, he said as he filled his beak with another mouthful of worms. 
Deary kept searching and finally found her mum, dad, aunt and friend Alex, all in a flock together. Welcome, dearie, said her mum, giving her a peck in the cheek. I hear you've had quite an adventure. Deary recounted the tales of her travels, about the oil spill, about the habitat destruction, and about the aeroplane. Hmm, she said, her mum said. It seems like there's much more obstacles from when I popped out of my egg. Yes, said her dad. Some we can't even see. Her dad went on. On my way, I flew into an invisible wall. Are you sure? said Deary. Yes, yes, I'm sure. So what happened was I, I saw some nuts in one of those human houses. And, well, I tried to eat some because the human houses were actually on top of the mudflats that we used to always visit on our travels to Scotland. But the mudflats weren't there anymore because the, the human houses were there. So I thought I thought I could have some of the nuts from inside. I was so hungry and I tried to fl fly into it. But yes, as I said, there was an invisible wall. A window, explained Aunt Minerva. I had a friend who flew into one and passed out. The local authorities looked after her until she was fit enough to fly. But it was very scary. We all need to be very careful flying home, said Deary, and her mum nodded, giving her a hug. After a few days, Deary met a local resident, Ollie the oyster catcher. She asked him, don't you mind all of us being here and eating all the food? Oh, said Ollie, no, 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 not at all. Migration's not a crime, it's a force of nature, and we've got so much here. Plenty of worms for everyone. Lots of space to go round here. Sharing is caring. We have to help our global community, especially in their time of need, and especially when there's nowhere else for you to go. Besides, I love learning about people from all over the world. And sure enough, over the months to come, as the days got shorter and the snow fell, Deary learnt about cultures from all over the world, heard their stories and songs, and had a great time, and made new friends. Finally, as the days got brighter and warmer, it was time to return back to Russia. A large flock of her fellow Dunlans gathered, and she had her flight buddies beside her, her parents, Aunt Minerva and Alex. See you next year! She tweeted to her new friends from all over the world. And finally, for the very, very last time, Deary moved her head from side to side, side to side. She shook her shoulders up and down and up and down. She took a deep breath and stretched out her wings as wide as they could go pointing the fingers of her feathers to their furthest tips that they could reach. She took another deep breath and said, What a day to be alive! She began flapping her wings and took to the sky, climbing and gliding to reach up high and inside. She knew exactly where to go and soared in that direction. Wow! What an amazing story about Dunlins. I had no idea about the journey that they went on before they arrived here at the Inner Fourth. Let's summarise what we learnt today about Dunlins. Dunlins are small wading birds which belong to the sandpiper family. Wading birds are found along the shorelines and mudflats, so usually next to some water. They have a long beak and legs, which are both dark in colour, and have a brown and sandy red kind of colour on the back and an off-white browny chest. But they have a distinct black patch on their bellies in summertime. Dunlin's beaks are long, black, curved and thin. This helps them reach their food in the mudflats. 
the Dunlin's mum goes ahead to the feeding grounds after she lays the egg. Then it's dad's turn to look after the baby. Dunlin's inherit the knowledge of migration and the same type, size and colour of feathers, wings, beak and feet as their parents. This is genetically embedded in them. Dunlins learn from other Dunlins about predators, bird songs, including alarms, and how to fly and flock. Flock is when the birds fly together. This is a learned behaviour and not inherited. After 20 days, Dunlin babies are independent enough to be left alone. So it's the father's turn to go to the feeding ground in Scotland. Did you listen closely and find out what the main obstacles on Deary's journey were? There was an oil spill, habitat destruction, an aeroplane and windows. We'll now take a closer look to see how to help any birds that encounter these obstacles. First up, oil spills. Oil spills is a type of pollution that can occur on land or in the water, but mostly the spills are found in oceans. They are usually caused by humans extracting fossil fuels from the ground. Oil can stick to the fur and feathers on birds and other animals. This reduces the insulation of the fur or feathers, which means they get really cold very easily and not very well. The oil also um, decreases their ability to fly. This means that they're easier for predators to catch as prey. Oil is also toxic, which can make plants and animals not very well and even sometimes result in death. To help clean up the birds is a specialist job and should only be done by trained people from the SSPCA. Windows are another obstacle for migrating birds. Birds seem to fly into the windows because they're clear and they didn't realise that they're there, which means they go into them at full pellet and can become stunned. If you see a bird that has flown into a window, this is what to do. Get someone to help you. Sit back and watch it for a while, as it might just be stunned and need some time to recover. Check it for injuries by picking it up gently and put it in a safe and sheltered place. Do not feed or water it, just give it time to heal and then let it be free again. Habitat destruction. Unfortunately, the number of Dunlins that have dropped by 50% in the last 20 years because many of the mudflats where they go to feed have been destroyed. Mudflats have been destroyed because of climate change due to rising sea levels and erosion. They're also under threat throughout history from being cleared for farmland or for building on. We can help Deary the Dunlin by protecting the mudflats for example, the conservation project at the RSPB Skin Flats Reserve. Next, let's map the journey of Deary the Dunlin from her birthplace in Russia to Scotland. Here we have a map. This is Europe with Russia over here and the United Kingdom with Scotland up here. The North Arrow 
tells us the, the direction we are facing. So this way is north. And a scale bar tells us the distance between two places. We want to mark the stops along the way. These are identified by the red dots on the map. You start off with Diri's birthplace in Russia, down to Finland, up to Sweden, down to Norway, and across to Scotland, the River Forth Mud Flats. This is Diri's migration journey. Now, let's look at the direction that Deary would have travelled. Here we have a compass. A compass tells us what direction to travel in. We've got north, east, south and west. You move around the compass in a clockwise direction. For example, if we want to work out the direction that Deary took from Russia to Finland, we'll look at the compass. So we're going down that way. So if we if the north arrow tells us the direction as we went over, so this way is up north. So if this is north, that must be east, straight down is south, to the left is west. Finland is not quite south and not quite west, therefore it's southwest. And then Finland up to Sweden. Let's start again with the North Arrow. Not quite north, not quite south, not quite west. But if we travel west, carry on going round in a clockwise direction, we reach it. Therefore, you Diri travelled from Finland to Sweden in a northwest direction. Next, Diri travelled from Sweden down to Norway. Again, we we'll look at the north arrow. This way's north. Straight down is south, to the left is west, therefore in between south and west is southwest, where Deary, the direction Deary took to travel to Norway. Finally, Deary travelled from Norway all the way to Scotland. We'll look one more time to see the final direction that she travelled in. Up is north, not to the east, not quite to the south, not quite to the west, but again in between south and west direction, Deary travelled to Scotland in a southwesterly direction. I hope you have enjoyed and learned lots about the migration of birds to the inner fourth in today's session. Now, I challenge you to get outside and complete an RSPB's Wild Challenge Award to experience and help nature. This session I challenge you to complete food and water for wildlife. This is to help nature by providing birds or other wildlife with the correct food and water. Then sit back and watch who appears. Could it be birds or butterflies? Decide what type of wildlife you'd like to help and attract to your school grounds. Research and think about why it is important to provide the right type of food and then create the food or water and put it out 
to help nature. Don't forget to ask your teacher to mark as complete as this counts towards earning your badge. Have fun. Goodbye.